Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. gentlemen we always love to talk to this guy you know why because we love to talk to this guy hi larry bubbles brown how are you good and i you love to talk to me because you make me i make people realize their life's not as bad yeah 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 how's your life going larry bubbles brown uh just i'm bored senseless this lockdown is uh not fun it's gotten real bad out there in California. Yeah, I guess the numbers went crazy again, and so they're locked. Uh, you can't. Uh, we well, can go outside, but you can't. Uh, no st- retail stores have opened up again, so you can go in those. Well, wait, I don't get it. They've had. They have a real bad problem out there, and yet they reopen the retail stores. Now, how how stupid is that? Well, I guess if you keep their distance that shouldn't be a problem they still don't have outdoor dining which is much safer than indoor shopping so well you know what they do here the 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 indoor dining okay has been banned at this point because we had the numbers go up again so they Mm -hmm. banned that but outdoor dining is okay the temperature today is let me see here 45 degrees right now uh, you want to sit outside and eat? No. <laughs> no. So what they build are these outdoor dining units that are covered. All right? So you're, so you're back inside. So you're back inside, basically. And that, that that makes no sense whatsoever. So I, I don't get it. You know, we're all going to die. I think when, when you may coin that phrase... Well, I don't think I coined it, but <laughs> but you certainly made it part of your act. Yeah. We're all gonna die. Um, that that was one of your catchphrases. That and are you open? I've got money. I've got cash. Yeah, I've got cash. Yeah, that was your we're going over to Oakland and I'll going. Tell you, I'll tell you how bad it is in L.A. They they had so many deaths. They had to. Uh... They had to ease the smog rules so they could could cremate so many bodies. (laughs) Seriously. Is that really true? Yeah, that's true, yeah. Oh, geez almighty. Oh, Uh, this is... The morgues were full, so they had to get refrigerated trucks to hold bodies. They just... Well, I've determined that this is the end of the world. I really have. I think that really they're not going to solve the problem. Okay, it's just going to keep mutating and mutating and mutating and mutating until, you know, we're all fighting for food in the streets and, uh, you know, it turns into this apocalyptic vision of the world. Uh, And thank God I've only got a few years left, so I won't have to be around to see all of it if this doesn't kill me. Well, you're you're right, though. I think this thing could mutate, which then could make the vaccine irrelevant. Yeah, which... uh, uh, which I got the other day, by the way. Oh, you did? Yeah. Wow. I got it. Yeah. Any uh, reaction? Just the arm hurts a little, you know. Where okay. the, you know, but, but I, I, I get that when I get a, a regular flu shot, you know, or a tetanus shot. Uh, You're safe. Well, I'm not safe. I'm about fifty percent safe. I got to get the booster, and they're supposed to give it in four weeks, but the closest appointment they had was five weeks. You know, and then we had to wait out. Here's the best part: we had to wait out in line for two hours, and <laughs> and they send you this 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 letter that is just absolutely admonishing you: do not get here early. Get here five minutes before your appointment because we won't let anybody in before five minutes. So we get there five minutes beforehand, and there's a line, and it takes us two hours 
to get inside and get the shot. Oh, God, Jesus. So uh, uh, what, what, what's with admonishing us? Do not, absolutely do not get here earlier than five minutes. I'd say get here two hours ahead of time. I mean, it's just ridiculous. And then when you got inside, they say, they, they, they say um, uh, uh, answer these questions, and then you will get a QR code, and you take the QR code with you to the... Uh, uh, to the the um, uh, inoculation place, and um, I guess they do something with the QR code. Well, I, I bring my QR code, and I also bring my ID number, okay, for it, for the appointment. And did they ever check that QR code? No. <laughs> never. Not for one second. They didn't say, I said, do you need the QR code? Oh, I, we don't have anything here that can read it. What? <laughs> Is there anything in this country do anything right anymore? Well, California, I, I've, been, I've been talking to people who've been getting the shot out in California, okay? And they talk about rather small lines, that it's pretty fast and efficient, and that it's really been efficient. The stories I hear is much better than the way it's going on in New York, which is like, you know, what they do is they go. We've run out of uh, we've run out of vaccine. Okay, well, well, what do you do when you run out of vaccine? Okay, I guess you close all the places you've got where you're doing the vaccine for the time being, right? Okay, yeah. but no, they run out of vaccine and they open up more places. What? Why are you? They said we have a super a super place. We're going to do it out at the Met Stadium. Okay. And we can take hundreds of thousands of people a day out there. Well, do you have hundreds of thousands of doses of the vaccine? Well, no, we ran out. Well, then why are you opening this thing? Okay. Quite frankly, I think the preference should be like ours was a block and a half away. You know, and most people can go to some place that is close to them. It's either in a school or, you know, some kind of community oh, that's center. That's the way it should be, yeah. Yeah. And and forget about these places like Met Stadium. You don't need that, right? Yeah, let's get a big crowd together. <laughs> yeah, let's get a super spreading crowd. Right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, I mean, it's just it's insane. It is just we're, we're third world. It's over. We're, we're 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 talking about third world. No no question about it. And I would love to be happy about all of this, but I mean, after I, and on top of that, you got to remember that the people who are have are have preference, okay, are sixty five and over. So these would be older people. Some of them get up to eighty and ninety. All right, okay. Now you've got them waiting out in the cold for two hours, standing, right? There's nobody saying, "Hey, is there somebody in a wheelchair? Come on ahead." No, because if that was the case, I'd go out and rent a wheelchair, okay? <laughs> uh, they don't do any of that. So these people are out there waiting for two hours, and, and the woman came by, and I said, how long is it going to be? And she says, oh, I don't know, this line's about two hours from the end of it. I went, oh, yeah. oh. I said, that's good. I said, so what you're saying is we're going to get pneumonia before we get COVID, you know? <laughs> so she didn't like that too much. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, okay. and then That's she hilarious. walked. She walked by talking to somebody who was asking about the line. She says, "Well, we have a slight problem here," and I looked at her and I went, "Slight problem?" <laughs> she did not react to me, and then it was so bad that a, that a TV truck shows up and the guy takes pictures right of us all standing in line. And last night I'm watching the CBS Evening News. <laughs> And our line was on it. It you was the it. Line. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So that's how bad it, how bad it's getting. And, and in California, you, uh, I'm telling you, I talk to people who go get it, and they just they just walk right in. You know, it's no problem. You know, so uh, 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 you know, you, you guys have actually got it together better than we do. But, that's hard uh, to believe. <laughs> I got my little. Uh, I got my little temperature gun. Let me see if my temperature has gone up at all. They say the second shot, it's not that pleasant that you do have after effects. Let me see here. There we go. Ninety-eight. Yeah, it's a little higher than it normally. It's ninety-seven nine. Uh, you know, 
So I mean, it goes, uh, it, it it goes up and down. Is what it does, you know. And 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 I'm I'm feeling a little, eh, a little off today. But otherwise, uh, you know, it's it seems to be okay. But have, are are you going to get your shot? How old are you now? Well, uh, sixty-eight. So oh, I, can, the... I, I I'll be first. In, I can be, I'll be among the first, I guess. But... Well, no, you've got you. You should start looking into getting it. I'm just a little. They came up with this thing so fast. I'm a little queasy about it. So. Well, they didn't come up with it fast. They invented this particular thing. Okay, this method. Uh, about 18 years ago. So it's not like it's quick. What it is, is it's a, a RDMA or there's some type name for it. It's not a vaccine. That's that's why I think they're making a big mistake in scaring people off. They go vaccine. Well, what's a va- what do you know is a vaccine? Okay. Polio shots. Yeah, but I mean, what do they do? What is the process? What What is it in well, the back? They, they put a weakened or dead virus into you. To... Yeah, that's not the case here. There is no dead virus. Yeah, it changes it. What does it change? Your it, RNA it, it, or what something? What it does, yeah, it does something about telling your body, hey, this is what the COVID looks like. Now go take care of it, you know. And and so it, it, uh, it, 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 it it's literally teaching your body to fight it okay and it's a it's a code that says okay eh, there's there's that little spiky devil okay go get him neutralize him and and that's what it really is it's not a it's not like they give you a little bit of it and then you get antibodies and the antibodies go out and fight it okay it's, it's, so you're not getting anything remotely the same as the uh, oh, okay. That's the disease. The, what you're getting, the reason why it, it's supposedly the second shot, you really get to feel like crap, uh, is because what it's doing is it's training your body to fight this thing. So um, um, they say the first one you're going to not feel so well. Today I'm feeling a little off, you know. But uh, yesterday I was feeling fine, and that was a day after I got it. So, you know. But my arm is still hurting a little bit. And uh, I'm sure it's down in my body now going, uh, okay, here we go. We're we're getting your body ready to take care of this. So I don't know. Well, I read that they this shot they've come up with could actually, they think it could help uh, beat mus- muscular sclerosis and other diseases too with different forms. That would yeah. that'd be interesting. Yeah. Oh, oh, somebody's calling me. Who's calling me? Spam risk. Okay, well, it's, I decline that. I get these spam calls all the time. What happened to that thing I signed up for for no spam calls? Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember that thing they had? Oh, the no call list. No call list. Phone up for the no call list. And uh, it, 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 what the no call list is, it gave them a list of people to call. I know. You know, it was terrible. Like a, yeah, it's all done robotically now. So it's they're trying to stop it again. It's... it's Totally out of control. Do you know what I hate? What I hate is when you get one of these calls and then you go, hello, and there's nothing on the other end of the line. Mm-hmm. Nothing. Zero. Zilcho. Nobody saying, hey, your car insurance is running out. I get those all the time. And I go, my God, my car insurance is running out. I better do something about this. And I suddenly remember I don't own a car. A car. <laughs> Do you get the one where uh, we've noticed unusual activity on your Social Security account? And yeah, yeah. That one's, that's a big one. But, you know, I mean, you and I don't fall for that, right? No, I guess right. some people must. But No, but so, listen, believe me, I'm getting older. I'm starting to forget stuff, and I'm starting to dodder a little bit. And it, I, it's easy for me to do it, but... You know, you get an older person who doesn't know what's going on. They get a call going, you know, we're about to cancel your credit card. Please put in this information. And they go, oh, my God, I don't want my credit card canceled. And they do yeah. something about it. You can't blame them. You know, it's not they're stupid or anything like that. You know, but but why don't we do anything about that? This is preying on people. You know? Well, again, this country can't get anything done. <laughs> oh, yeah, they could, yeah. Well, we'll see whether, how much they can get done and not get done now that we have a new administration in power. 
The other one couldn't get anything done because the guy in charge of the country didn't really want to go to work, you know, and uh, this guy does. Uh, in fact, it'll probably kill him, you know, in which case, <laughs> in which case, Kamala will be president of the United States. Um, so, you know, um, but we, we certainly got a one-stop shopping with Kamala Harris, didn't we? Yeah. Well, she's <laughs> black. She's Indian. She's this, she's that, you know, um, she's got every, uh, uh, one covered. <laughs> yes. Hey, I just looked. We've run out of time. Time flies when you're talking about the uh, vaccine. When you're talking to Larry Bubbles Brown. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to you next week, Larry. You got it. Okay. Bye. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And cue announcer. Hello, everybody. How are you? Here we are again tonight. How are you? Doing another another show, our last one of the week. Maybe our last one ever. I don't know. I'm getting it. I, I be, I'll tell you what's been happening lately, and I don't understand it. Last night, we had a very small amount of people call. Good quality show. Good quality callers. I wasn't, I'm not complaining. I don't want them to think that their calls weren't appreciated, but a low call volume. About Four people. That was it. Okay? And then I go over and I see, well, how many people are going to watch this in a given day? And I'm hitting all-time lows on the number of people that are watching the show. Now, maybe it's because the election's over with, the inauguration took place, and people are just tired of talking about the kind of stuff that this show normally talks about. But, you know, we, 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 we keep going with anything that people want to talk about. And it, it could be that there's no politics to talk about at this point. Who knows, you know. But anyway. So I begin to wonder if I should be doing this uh, at least four nights a week, maybe one night a week, and do the Monday show, which I, I really have come to love. And if you haven't heard it, it's, uh, it's in the on-demand thing. You should go take a look at it. It's also on our Facebook page. It's also on uh, YouTube, and it's just called Alex Bennett's Pop Up, and um, it's a it's a really good show, and it's got great people calling it, and the nature of it. I mean, it's because it's four o'clock in the afternoon here. Everybody's just a little bit more mellow, uh, and uh, at, at night they get cranky. Could that be it? I don't know, but anyway. I've been very happy with that show, but I haven't been happy with what's been happening with this show. I mean, why am I doing this when I only get a handful of people? Now, some nights I was getting, I'll tell you something, I'll give you a good example. We get maybe five times the amount of people who check in on the pop-up show than check in on our daily, nightly shows, okay? So then I begin to wonder, well, why do it? And the other part of me goes, well, but there are a lot of people that call it and they enjoy doing it. And so uh, I, you know, that's why I, why I continue to do it. Uh, uh, but, you know, I be, I'm beginning to wonder, do I need to do this? Every, if I did it one day a week, maybe everybody would want to call then. And then uh, uh, more people would want to see it. And it would be up there for a week, so it would have a lot of time for people to catch up with it and watch it. And uh, why, should I do, why should I do four nights a week? You know, I start out by doing five nights a week. And part of the reason why I did five nights a week was primarily because uh, I was used to doing five days a week of, of shows. I'm, I'm used to that as a radio guy, okay? And, uh, uh, you know, so it was, uh, that was my way, well, the reason why I did it five nights a week. Then I went down to four, because five was kind of getting exhausting as I got older and so on. And also I figured, eh, you know, maybe more people will be interested if I do it four nights a week. So then I went to four nights a week. And that's where it's been ever since. And uh, I'm just wondering if I should go down to one day a week, you know, for the nighttime show. Uh, and I'm, I'm considering it. I'm considering it. Let, uh, maybe I'll do it on a Friday and uh, Jack can do this slot um, Monday through Thursday. 
something like that, you know, if he wants to. But anyway, I haven't figured it out yet, and I'm just I'm just very depressed. Maybe the numbers will change, and all of a sudden more people will be uh, viewing it and so on. But uh, it's just amazing that in the last, I don't know, it's about three weeks, it's been really low. There was a time, I think just prior to the election, where it was really, I was getting some pretty high numbers, and I think that's because people like to hear all about this. But I think they're exhausted. I think they're just, just worn out. But anyway, let's go to what few people we have again tonight waiting to talk to us. Uh, let me see here. Here we go. Here's the uh, Zoom panel. Uh, and uh, they're joining us. Uh, there we go. Hello, hello, everyone. How are you this evening? Good. Good, good, good. Uh, and here, here comes Charlie Wallace, too. So it's really the same crowd we had last night. You know, the stalwarts. And uh, again, Robert isn't here. I don't know what happened to Robert. I'm going to have to uh, send him off a note and say, we've missed you. Where have you been, dear friend? Anyway. Sergeant of Arms. Sergeant of Arms, yeah. I'm going to tell yeah. him that, that since he has not been calling and he's Sergeant of Arms, it's been absolute anarchy around here. And uh, <laughs> people figure they can say anything they want to. Yeah. Maybe it's put too much pressure on them. That could be too, you know, but anyway. Uh, so I think you ought to continue this. This is uh, giving me a new life to meet some new people. and Yeah, but what, and, what new people? You're meeting the same three other people every night. Well, you know, that's only <laughs> been tonight and last night. I mean, you know. Yeah, yeah, but uh, I don't know. I'm going to have to consider what to do with this. I mean, I do it. Uh, the one reason, I the one thing that prevents me from from doing it less is because uh, you guys seem to really enjoy it. You look forward to it and you look forward oh, to yeah. being part of it. So absolutely, you know, uh, here comes Josh Wheeler. Okay. He, uh, he joins us usually on Friday nights. Um, <laughs> but um, um, I wanted to say something to Alan. Alan, last night you argued with me about the amount of time b between getting the one shot and getting the next shot. Well, did you see the CDC today came out with a new guidance? No. <laughs> yeah, for for either shot, up to you can do it at six weeks. Oh, that's great. Six weeks. Yeah, and they're probably saying six weeks because they know some people are going to fudge and it's going to be seven and eight. Okay, so they said six weeks and it's still fine. So I'm under six weeks for my next You're good. shot. Good. Yeah. So. Uh, I, also, also, wait a minute, one other thing, and this will be of interest to Brian if he didn't read it. They also said you can mix shots. What? In an emergency. In an emergency. They don't suggest you do it, but in an emergency, you can mix the Pfizer with the Moderna. Ooh. So you can do it, not, not in the same shot, but that you can yeah. do this first shot could be your, say, your Moderna, and your second shot could be your Pfizer. One on the left, one on the right. One on the yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> so this is all from the CDC. Yep, yep. They've done such a good job. They've been a great job, year. haven't they? <laughs> yeah, I don't trust anything they say. And in England, it's twelve weeks. Okay. The yeah. CDC needs to recreate themselves. Yeah, but it, they've done such a horrible job this this past year. Yeah, they have. that's because of Trump. Yeah. Well, here well we be, because of whatever. I mean, the CDC was created for just this reason, for a, a huge pandemic, and they dropped the ball every well, couple well, weeks. Well, give the That's wrong because information. Trump made them. Okay. Have, I, you, have you seen the interviews lately with Fauci? Yes. 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 Have yes. you seen yeah. what he's fine? He, to begin with, I've never seen him look as refreshed and happy. Yep. He always he looked ten years younger. He, he, yes, yeah, he, for the for the I, entire. I Trump told him to call in on the show. Yeah, for the <laughs> entire for the entire Trump administration, he looked so dour and so depressed, and now he's like he's happy. I mean, wouldn't you be dour and depressed if you had to work for that idiot? Yeah, well, <clears> but the point yeah. is, he seems to be refreshed about the mm. whole thing, you know, and. Uh, uh, he he today was uh, saying that yeah he finally is telling stories now, he's saying I think he was talking with Rachel Maddow and she said well you look happy and he says 
Well, I should be. Uh, my big weight has been lifted off of my shoulders. He said he, he said he felt he had to, you know, he has felt that he had had to be part of the Trump administration because somebody had to be in there to try and keep the guy from acting on his worst impulses. But, you know, he said when he was coming up with stuff like hydrochloroquine or whatever yeah. that, that thing was, he said, I just, he said, I, I, I didn't know how to handle that. You know, he said, I didn't want to come out against the president because that was not the good place to position yourself, you know. So he was playing politics to try and, you know, get Stay the, the yeah. best he could out of, out of a president. And, uh, but I think that was to no avail. But uh, anyway, so hello to, uh, let's see, Josh Wheeler's here, Kevin's here, uh, Trucker Steve is here. Uh, you haven't gotten your shot yet, have you, Kevin? No, I applied for it the other day. Yeah, and uh, when are you supposed to get it? I don't know. They haven't called me back yet. Yeah. But I uh, volunteered to uh, work the mass, uh, the mass vaccine site i volunteered to be one of the volunteers oh really oh good yeah that's very nice of you and maybe i should do that once i get my second shot maybe i'll offer to do that you know be one of the people who goes up and down the line and says it's only going to be three hours don't worry folks <laughs> don't worry about it the line's yeah. moving fast three hours <laughs> and then we get ready to hear some nasty comments like i gave them you know <laughs> I mean, it's not yeah. their it's not their fault. Although it was their fault, they said we got a late start today. I said, what does you know, that mean? And I was thinking, yeah, what does that mean? Last February, <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it was just a late start, and I'm standing in line here. I'm an old person; I can't stand in line like this. I had to go home and go to the bathroom and come back. You know, I had to also put on a warmer jacket. Yeah. You know, so uh, I didn't. I, well, I, I I had a bigger fear of getting pneumonia than getting COVID. Okay, because the weather was a super spreader event. It'll all get better. Everybody's just got to settle down, go with so it. It'll Alex, get better. Yeah, he's working so, on it. So the the guy that used to head the FDA, Scott Got Gottlieb, whatever his name is, MD. Mm -hmm. He's been on a lot. He also sits on the board of Pfizer. Yeah, he said he says today the CDC is wrong and the and the CDC will re do their whatever and, and get it right. But who knows? The CDC tells you one thing and another thing's going on. And, you know, I don't trust the well, CDC I'm, as far I'm, as I'm, I can say. I don't what, trust what, Scott. What, what, what Fauci <laughs> said, what Fauci said tonight was something I haven't heard him say before. He said, in the pipeline right now is a vaccine, okay? In other words, a shot that they give you that has a little bit of the stuff in it that will kill it and blah, 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 blah. He said, if we get that, he said, game over, right? He said, this is kind of like, a, I don't know, it's, it's kind of a, it's like trying to patch a balding tire, you know? I mean... It does the job, but we don't know how much and for how long. And we they know so little about it that they get things like, oh, no, now it's six weeks. Oh, in England, it's 12 weeks. It's, uh, you know, I don't think they know much about this. And I don't think Pfizer or Moderna know that much about it. They only know what they found out so far. Am I, well, am, I, I, am I categorizing this right, Brian? Because you know how this yeah. stuff works. Yeah, like I said last night, it, it's it's the new hot thing to, to help it, but um, yeah. don't know, they still don't know so much about it. So Yeah. I yeah. trust Pfizer over Moderna. <clears throat> this is Moderna's first vaccine ever come to market, it's, it, it, and it, Pfizer has been doing this for years. Yeah, but uh, from what I understand, mm -hmm. there's no difference between the two. That's and, what I understand. And if they, too, say, just... if they say you can have your first shot be Moderna and your second one be Pfizer or the other way around, mm -hmm. obviously there's a great similarity between both of them. And <laughs> and uh, most people, a lot, everybody I've talked to has gotten Moderna. You know, that seems to be what's being spread around the most. Plus, I would rather have the Moderna than the Pfizer because the Pfizer has to be frozen. You know, it has to be a popsicle before they can give it to you. And um, uh, uh, because of that, 
The Moderna doesn't have to be. It just can be refrigerated. So when I go down to the local school here to get my shot, which is much more convenient than going to, say, some hospital mm -hmm. to get it, all right, they don't have that refrigeration. They've just got a refrigerator there, and that will store well in those refrigerators. And mm -hmm. that's why I trust Moderna more than I trust Pfizer, because I don't know, you know, where the, where the Pfizer has been and whether anybody's been t keeping it cold enough, you know. Yeah, I guess you don't. Yeah. And they could they could have those frozen in the morning, and then they know with the fridge refrigeration it'll last all day. I think what they should do is they should take the Pfizer and make it into a popsicle and just have people no. lick, lick the thing. So just just for information here, yeah. I'm on Moderna's website, and storage and handling. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what you call freezing, but it needs to be stored at between uh, minus 25 and minus 15 degrees uh, Celsius, which is between minus 13 and plus five degrees Fahrenheit. So water's at 32. So yeah, yeah. this Moderna's frozen too. Now, what, what we don't know is how many hospitals have the deep freeze that the Pfizer, the Pfizer's got to be like, <clears throat> well, I, I think like from, minus what I, 100. from what I understand, I, most, most hospitals have those kind of freezers both, they, for both vaccines. It, well, well, I mean the, the, the for the Pfizer, but the, if I go to my local school, I'm sure, you know, the, the, yeah. they've got the refrigerators that are used for, you know, the well, school. They put them on wheels. They move them around, yeah. dry ice. There's a lot of ways. Also, the super freezing those other ones take, those super freezers are not as available mm -hmm. as just a good. I mean, you could store this probably in your refrigerator in the freezer compartment. We're trying to get. I don't, I don't, I don't think so. Yeah. I'm buying no. refrigerators and we're buying uh, uh, other, other items like the refrigerators for our new facilities. And uh, our CEOs told us get the stuff now, even though we don't need it. Some factories till the end of the year. Mm -hmm. We're yeah, it's mm -hmm. hard to get refrigerators, hard to get all these things mm -hmm. right now. And the one thing, the one element we don't know about any of this stuff is how long it's going to be effective for. You mm -hmm. know, it could be effective for three months and that's it. You know, we don't know, know, or it could be effective for the rest of your life. We just don't know. We, we do know that it's a, at least effective for three months because Moderna started injecting people with the vaccine in spring of last year. Yeah. And those people are still showing antibodies. So at least for Moderna, we know that it's probably I, do, I, don't, to I don't think it's antibodies that this produces. This doesn't yeah. produce antibodies. This produces a uh, information that it gives your system on how to battle the coronavirus. It's it's what not it like. it's it's Back not a spike. thing where antibodies are created. That's why uh, Fauci was so happy to announce that they have in the pipeline actual vaccines. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, in the traditional sense, you can't call this really. Am I am I right, Brian? You, you right. That, that, that's that's the I M. Think. That's the M part of the mRNA. That's the M was the memory. So it gives gives your cells a memory of what the the coronavirus is going to look like when it comes. Yeah. If it comes to attack yeah. them. Here, here's it's a photo, here's a here, here's a here's a photograph of the coronavirus kill on site, shoot exactly. on site. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So it, we we may find out that the M NRAs are better than our old vaccines. Could well be. Most, could well. Be. Most of our old vaccines are made up a year in advance like like say the flu vaccine it's about 40 percent effective on an average year mm -hmm. um they got to keep changing it it takes they've got to grow it in eggs and so on and so forth with the with these mnra vaccines if all of a sudden the virus changes and the vaccine doesn't cover it as well mm -hmm. you know five days two weeks they can change the mr nra vaccine and now you have protection whereas the, the vaccines that you're talking yeah. about where like a flu vaccine a true vaccine as you call it i don't know what i don't know what you call it but anyhow it, um it, it, is uh, it is it mnra uh brian 
mRNA is what we're using M-R-N-A. now. mRNA. Okay. Yeah, they can, the memory RNA. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And Dr. Fauci says they can change that within a week or two to if if the virus changes. Mm-hmm. With the true, with the vaccine that you're talking about. You have to then redevelop. Which is, yeah, which, is, which is like the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, Yeah. which I think is what you're talking about, Alex. Uh, and I think that's about ready to get that, that I have stock in Johnson & Johnson and they're going to ask for FDA approval soon, yeah. but it's it's supposedly yeah. not going to be as effective. Well, yeah, I I haven't heard on it, that. It's I, in I think the that's 80s true. or something like that. But that but that's better than nothing. I want to say hello to Mark Thorner who hasn't joined us in a while. Hello, Mark. Hello, Alex. How you been? Yeah. By the way, your camera looks spectacular. Did you get a new camera since we talked to you in the last uh, oh a couple of years ago? Uh, it's a new computer. It's a new computer, yeah, because the, the cameras they're putting in these computers now look gorgeous, and yeah. the rendition that Zoom does is spectacular. So <laughs> what can I say? How are you doing, Mark? Mark, all things, yeah. all things considered, not bad, Alex. Not Mark bad. lives in Florida. Yeah. Need I say more? Oh, and, yeah. and by the way, Charlie lives in Texas. The two of you should be wearing masks on this program. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, I just feel that even though it's it's Zoom, uh, I, I could catch something from you guys. Now, how is it in your neck of the woods, uh, Mark? Um, surprisingly, all things considered, uh, it's still that level of nuttiness that I've always bitched about, but... It's not as bad as it could have been, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. still, Florida has a very high rate of infection. Uh, yeah, I believe me, I understand that. But for some reason, the area that I live in, mm-hmm. we're not that bad. Now, uh, it's like everything else uh, down here in Florida. Forget about getting any kind of vaccine because... The numbers are so low, and the distribution infrastructure, yeah, put it bluntly, sucks. Yeah, yeah. What, what, what population? There. What percent is population are over sixty-five in that area? In my where I live yeah. in Collier County, a very high percentage. Now you're yeah. you're so where again? You what's what's on the list? What's the city basically there? It's uh, it's Fort Myers is the nearest big city. Yeah, mm. yeah. Yeah, and Airport there. Yeah. yeah and and it, 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 you um uh you know, I mean, you got a lot of old people down there. So they got to be worried about it. Got to be a lot of deaths as a result of old people, you know. Um but you got a new neighbor with orange hair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> not, not my part of Florida, pal. No, no, thank God. No, no. And he, <laughs> who who wants to move there, right? You know. Um, it's, well, you're just happy today, you, aren't you, Alex? You, but no, you know what I'm unhappy about? I thought I would be rid of Trump. But I turn on MSNBC, and every five minutes, they got a fucking picture of Donald Trump. Anytime they say, like, and Donald Trump did this, and then they have to show a picture of him. <laughs> That's why I don't watch MSNBC. Yeah, I mean, I, I just, it, oh, I'm sure they're all doing it. And I hear over at Fox, they're already saying that the Biden administration is the worst ever. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Two days, yeah. You know, I got to admit it, that as a raging lefty, okay, I at least gave Trump a week, you know. (laughs) But they're not even giving him any time at all, you know. Um have you been watching any of the news coverage, Josh, or do you stay away from that? You know, I've seen a pretty fair amount. I didn't watch very much news tonight. Yeah. It's a busy day, but I've seen fair amounts since then. I mean, yeah. it's it's what you would expect from the usual people. I mean, you know, Kevin McCarthy and the Rand Paul and the group of them will stand up there, and make sure they attend the inauguration because power is passed from one person to the other, but they always want to swim with the big fish as close as they can so they show up and do their little thing so they can look important and then 15 minutes later they're right back to you know where they were which is why 
But you go over to yeah. MSNBC and they're doing a major happy dance. And then you go over to Fox and the world is coming to an end. That's because <laughs> both of them are equally stupid. They're just equally stupid on different sides yeah. of the earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, I, well, so now I got to sit around and hear about how uh, fucking Democrats and Chuck Schumer are, are working through negotiations for how they're going to share power in the Senate and all that. I mean, it's oh, like, yeah, I was why don't you come over here and I'll draw you a big picture. Power. I mean, this I is all the power that we're going to have. Wait a minute. Hold no. on a second. Let me illustrate yeah. for you all the power that you're going to have. No, yeah, there's doesn't on their Chuck Schumer, already. can Fuck Chuck them. Schumer just say, we got 50 votes, you got 50 votes, but then we have a Democratic uh, uh, head of the nope. Senate, and nope. so therefore, what? Nope. And so therefore, we've way. got 51 votes, I mean, so I, we get I, anything I, we want. I, you I want to hear about how last time uh, in 2000... Yeah, when, when we when we had this same split, we we did this and we shared power and there was equal. Look, yeah, well, that was yeah, two thousand. No sharing power. power Look, you didn't share power. Oh, you didn't share power with us when you were had the majority. We used to do a lot of shit. Okay. Yep. I mean, we used to fucking uh, not fucking put justices on the Supreme Court. You know, fucking thirty five yeah. days from an election or whatever. Too. But you guys fucking did that. So. You're going to have to eat it. I mean, <laughs> yeah, if Chuck exactly. Schumer does anything in the morning other than get up and, and sit down for 10 or 15 minutes and think, how can I possibly Fuck make God. Mitch McConnell want to stick a fucking gun in his mouth today? He's completely yeah. wasting the first 20 minutes. <laughs> I mean, and look, I'm a pragmatic person, and I, I will... I will go along with certain Republican <laughs> ideas and certain things that they want, and I'm very fair, and I, I have criticized my my own party in quotes there, if you want, uh, as much as I felt like I needed to, mm -hmm. like I am now, and all that. But look, I mean, it's they fucking made this decision, yeah. you know, and now they have to live with it. When when we lost an election, they got their fucking judges and they got their fucking tax cut and all that. So I'm sorry, Holmes, but you can eat a fat dick for a while because we're gonna get some shit we want now too. Yeah, uh, but I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why they've got this idea. They've got to sit there and uh, discuss what a uh, t tie vote is or what a vote is in the in the Senate. No, we, we've got the votes to make it any way we want to, and we're gonna do it that way. Because you did it your way, you set up the rules of the game, and we're going to play by those rules. We won, we got the most people, blow me. Right? I mean, right, yeah, but, but I mean, that's what I've said for game. many years on here. This is what fucking yeah. Democrats do. This that's is why right. I never get mm -hmm. real excited when Democrats fucking have a lot of power. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm appreciative of the fact that it will be better than it would be when yeah. Republicans have power. I mean, so I'm, I'm in tune with that. All right. But I don't get all excited about it or anything. And this is why, because I basically just look at it and say, well, at least nothing will get worse. They won't fuck anything up, you know? I mean, but I don't really look at them as people who will advance much of an agenda or fix things. I yeah. mean, you know, I mean, that's why I supported Joe Biden, because he will at least probably do a few things that he can get, mm -hmm. sort of like Obama was able to accomplish. And then that'll be that. And then Republicans will probably come back into power and, you know, muck things up again for a while. I mean, that's the cycle we're in the yeah. last mm -hmm. part of, you know, 20 years or so, at least you know, most of my life. So, I yeah. mean, that's. That's probably where it'll go. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't understand. I mean, you know, like, you know, we'll, we'll have even numbers on committees. I mean, like, fuck that. Like I said, we'll, we'll, we'll draw Mitch a picture if that's what he wants. Right. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll circle all the fucking power we're going to have, and then we'll come over here and show you how much. He's going to have fucking none. You're going to have fucking zero. None whatsoever. I mean, you, you just, you're just not. I mean, but they're not going to fucking do it. I mean, this is why I've told you guys on off air for weeks. 
if they fucking run the same leadership out there as they did the last couple times with Schumer okay. and Pelosi, you're going to get the same shit you got the last couple times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, yep. you know, did I think that the speaker needed to be AOC? No, fucking of course not. You know, that's not what I was for. I was for someone else from that Biden camp that maybe could have got some shit done, but it's not going to happen. And Republicans are terribly difficult, hard to work with as it is. Mm-hmm. And when you match them up with, you know, the people that lead the Democratic Party, you're going to get a clusterfuck, which is exactly what you're going to get. But I will admit that a clusterfuck of old is better than what we lived through the last four years. Yeah. And yeah. is likely not to catch the whole nation on fire again. So, you know, that's I'll sleep better. But yeah. if you got fucking drugs, my fucking advice would be to use them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, anybody here? Uh, how many people here have had the uh, uh, the uh, uh, vaccine so far? Um, you and me. Have you had any after effects? No. I was a little tired today, and a little achy, and uh, I. Um, what is it? Uh, and the arm still hurts. But, but those are today. but those are side effects that are normal. Yeah, that, but I wondered if did you have you had those side effects? No, I had a sore arm the first day, and uh, the second day I was a little tired. Mm-hmm. But I'm a little tired anyhow. Yeah, but you know what I'm it's getting. I don't know me. if it was the vaccine or me. I was there waiting for the moment when they opened it up for uh, for uh, sixty. Uh, what is it? Uh, 75, 75 and over, and we immediately got online and we immediately made a uh, an appointment. Right? Mm-hmm. right, and all of a sudden I'm hearing Phil got his. Uh, uh, heroin addicts are getting theirs. Uh, you know, and I'm sitting around waiting for my day to come up, and I'm Sorry. going. A- Alan's the bearer of bad news on Monday. Alan was getting his, and on Tuesday I told everybody, <laughs> including you, and I told you Phil was getting his. So yeah, so I, Phil I got my that. his before I got mine. No, you it guys both got on it on Wednesday. Uh, really? What did you say? Uh, oh, yeah. How about the, let's look at Charlie. He, you're still waiting, right? Yeah, I'm supposed to get it tomorrow, finally. Okay. But, uh, but, you know, it depends on the state. Yeah. California it shouldn't be that way. Calif- be no, California isn't. Government. California is not a mess compared to the clusterfuck here in New York. Well, I'll buy that. Okay. I mean, it New is. New York's great compared to Texas. Oh, I, I, I don't know how it's going there. But, I, I you know, know what the, all, all of a sudden I hear about other states where anybody can get it. How about down where you are? Uh, have you had it yet, uh, uh, Mark? Mark? No. I'm, I'm, the whole infrastructure is fucked. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's, it's so bad, Alex, that uh, I'm just giving up. And, you know, if I've, I'm lucky by summertime if I get my first shot. Because they're giving it down there, they're giving it to people who who are like, un, you know, fourteen, you know, and not giving it to you. Tourists are getting it before me. Well, they're not, they now yeah. they now have passed a thing in in Florida saying you have to be a Florida resident to get a Florida shot. <laughs> you have to Maybe live all those United dead people States. who voted. <laughs> all dead people who voted are probably getting shots too. <laughs> so in California today, they announced that they're going to start inoculating police officers. Well, you know, I thought maybe they were all inoculated before I got my shot. That mm. was a news. Look, if news you if you tell me. me that you want to do all the doctors and the caregivers and the seniors in nursing homes the shot first, be my guest. I think Absolutely. that's appropriate. But I then you're next in your pecking order should be transit workers, uh, people who uh, work with the public uh, on a day-to-day basis, like in grocery stores, things of an essential nature. And then the people uh, 75 and over, and then you go to 65 and over. You wait till you get the 85, uh, the 75 and overs done. Uh, because if here's what happens. We don't have enough. We ran out today. In the state of New York, we ran out of out of out of the uh, vaccine. Okay, I understand that. So why did you open up Met Stadium for massive inoculations if you don't have the stuff? 
Why are you doing that? Keep the small little things open like the schools where it's convenient to everybody and you're not going to have this huge rush into there. Um, and then, you know, you're op uh, the governor comes on and says, we're opening up another 200 sites for inoculations. Do you have any uh, vaccine? No. <laughs> well, then why are you doing it, you moron? So, so in California, Alex, um, as of yesterday, they had... 300, over 300,000 vaccines in the state. And they've inoculated... 300,000. 300,000. Huh? 300,000. Yeah, 300,000. Okay. I don't yeah. know what I said. But they've only inoculated 160,000 people. Oh, wow. We've, we've inoculated... You know, I mean, we've inoculated 97% of the people of the... of 97% of, of the supply has been exhausted already. Uh, and not here. They got a lot of it, and they're not they're not putting it in anybody's arms. So it, it, the whole thing's a mess. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that Biden straightens this out, but I think part of it is the state of California. Probably part of it's the state of New York. You know, mm -hmm. this is this is all kind of new ground for everybody. But still, they had time. They knew the vaccines were coming. You know, but yeah. Well, I mean, it's, un you saw it's the, unfortunate. Now, it's here, unfortunate. here, had no plan, no yeah. plan at all to distribute now, the vaccine. Now we have yep. truck, trucker Steve is out on the road. Steve, mm -hmm. um, are you planning on getting an, an, a vaccine, or is it hard for you to have access to it because you're on the road so much? Uh, I'm gonna uh, get a hold of a doctor and see if I can uh, uh, get one because I've already had a friend who's. Uh, drive taxi and he's already had his yeah because yeah. he's considered essential because he's a taxi driver and because i crossed the border they're probably going to make it a uh mandatory anyway so yeah i'm yeah. gonna have to get it done hmm. so i'm gonna find out if i can get it done now and by the way the needle is this long <laughs> it goes up your nose now have you seen the the videos of it that thing's huge i'm surprised they don't hit bone you know, I don't know. The needle for the Pfizer was like a quarter inch. Really? Yeah, I saw the needle ahead of time. No big deal. I didn't even feel it. Yeah. Hmm. Well, you I just, had, just a better, had a big. What did you have, Moderna, or you have Pfizer? I had Pfizer. I think yeah. I think for Moderna, and yeah. they heard your show. Yeah. Somebody on your show said, "When that guy gets here, yeah. have a big long needle for him." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, you you just like to brag about this whole thing. Oh, I had the Pfizer. Pfizer's no, better no, than no. Moderna. Not, it, I I would have taken the Moderna if that's what. They I don't know. Me. I'm a. I would have taken fucking Kool Aid if it worked. You ah, know? Absolutely. Bleach. Well, you know well. who knows. In the end, maybe it does work. I I I have no idea. But uh, for yeah. all you for all you Republicans out there who might want to try it. Go ahead and let us know how it works out. We can we can ask Phil if he'll be the first. <laughs> yeah. He'll kill me for that. But yeah. did you guys uh did you guys hear about what happened? Uh two hundred uh National Guard troops got infected with COVID after the, yes. the inauguration. Uh, no, not no. after the I inauguration. Blame that on the Republicans. No, not after the inauguration. Because if they didn't start all this stop the steal bullshit. Yeah, no, they wouldn't it, have been there in the I, fucking first place. I don't believe that that is correct. I think it was from the Capitol riots. Right? Yeah, yeah, that was. It was what from it was. the Capitol riots yeah, that's that they called. The inauguration was like two days ago. So the only right. I read it a take... story it was from their sleeping from their from where they were sleeping in the no. parking garage or something. No, yeah. you know what happened? They were sleeping. This is so cool. I mean, I, I joined the National Guard just to do this for a night. They were sleeping. In the Capitol. They were sleeping right. under the dome. Yeah. Can you imagine that, Josh? Wouldn't that be the thrill of a lifetime? <laughs> to be able to, <laughs> huh, to sleep on the floor of the Capitol building? But then certain senators and stuff thought that was all wrong. And they made them sleep in the garage. Oh. Well, when everybody found out they were being forced to sleep in the garage, there was a big hue and cry, so they're now back under the rotunda again. The you interesting know. thing was... They they were sleeping inside and in the garage under Republican control, but the Republicans now want to say that's Biden's fault. 
Oh, I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but but it really was uh, um, it, it, they they that was happening. No, but the the actual uh, infections happened because of the of the riots, which means that was a super spreading event. And hopefully, yeah. a lot of those assholes will come down with COVID. Absolutely. You know. See the guy on uh, the kid on CNN that turned in his dad. No. Oh, oh yeah, he, he his uh he's an eighteen year old kid <clears throat> and uh Como interviewed him tonight and uh he basically saw you know, knew his dad. Him and his dad have been going back and forth, I guess, for the last couple of months and his father has been uh slowly turning into this radical and uh said he was gonna do something big. Do something big and I guess he left for D C and uh he saw him on TV, and his kid wrestled with whether he should turn him in or not. And basically saw him on TV, and he was one of the guys putting the shit through his eyes to get the tear gas out and God. thought it was his dad, so he turned his ass into the FBI. <laughs> well, And uh, Como had, a, Como had a, a interview with him tonight. He's 18-year-olds in college. And he said, you know, he said, I've had my opinions about it, but he's my dad. I wouldn't want to turn him in, but it was the right thing to do. And Pomo basically said, you know, we just had this interview with this guy, and I'm going to be watching social media, and mm -hmm. you guys come after this kid. I'm going to come after you. I thought it was pretty brave of the yeah. little bastard. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. I would say kiss, kiss your tuition goodbye. Yeah, uh, that guy probably did. he's from Texas, no less. <laughs> oh, that's oh, his dad probably, <clears throat> probably dead man. Aren't you proud to live in Texas? Uh, you went back there, Charlie. You were where? You were in, uh, was in Arizona. 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 Yeah. Well, yeah, no better. Well, the, yeah, the least they were big. They came through. At least they <laughs> voted for Biden. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, but it was uh, it was pretty brave of the kid to go on there and you know. You know, it, it was hard for him to uh, go on yeah. TV and talk about that shit. But well, people are turning in members of their family. Yeah. Even if the well, member, even if that member of their family wasn't in Washington. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I saw him. I saw him. He was right there. That's right. There's a prize I hear. Uh, uh, re reward. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm kidding. I don't know. Is there? Maybe you know there are there are rewards out for some people, yeah. I think so. There, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. I think fifty grand on some of them. Well, because there were yeah. people that like hit people with the fire extinguishers and you know, crushing well, they, people. They, legally, they can charge everybody that was inside the Capitol with murder. murder. The only yeah. one here that I haven't talked to since that whole thing happened at the Capitol is 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 uh, is uh, uh, Mark. Mark and um, Mark. When you saw this going down, what, what was your thought? I mean, you must have watched it. You know, okay, so I was at work, and I wasn't really paying much attention to the news that day. Mm -hmm. And because I thought, well, here it comes, you know, they're going to count, and this is it, you know. And it's like, well, it didn't really cross my mind that there were problems. Mm -hmm. Well, I get home check the news and i'm like what the hell and i was so upset alex and the only time i was i hate to say this was as upset was 9 yeah. 11. and the problem with 9 11 was i could not leave my apartment because the debris field was blowing down my to where i was living in brooklyn so i stuck my nose out I'm like, oh no. So I was, yeah. I, I basically that night went out into the middle of a swamp down here. I went out into the middle of Big Cypress just to like clear my head. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I just like, well, you what? know, but the, the big surprise was when I got home and I dared to look at the news and I saw they continued with the count. Mm -hmm. And that's when I knew, you know what? Uh, I know it's going to sound corny, guys, but justice will prevail. Well, I think I think that mm -hmm. they're you know they could have decided. Well, let's not go back tonight. We'll go back tomorrow, and nope, then we'll they, finish it. No, but they wanted to do it that night to just show 
nothing's going to stop the process. And but but I'll tell you, Alex, this is why I think there's some, you know, like I said, if you can find humor in a dire situation, the next morning, I awake to the funniest internet memes I have ever seen in my life. That took a lot of the sting out of, you know. Yeah. And if you can reduce something to humor, that's to me. Well, that, that's, that, that's our best. I'll tell you something. That's our best. What can I call it? Our best to quality. Therapy. No, our best quality is, as, as, okay. as human beings. That in a time of tragedy, we'll make a joke, mm -hmm. okay? And, and people go, oh, that's such bad taste that you made that joke. And you go, no, it's the best part of human nature that we can do that. We do that to take the sting out of what happened, you know? Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I, I, I often said, look, you know, I remember when the shuttle went up and it blew up. Within uh, 25, 30 minutes, and this was before the Internet was that big. There were jokes running around. The next morning, you had a joke. The joke was, uh, you know, you know what caused that, don't you? What free basing? That was the joke that was going around, and uh, we have a tendency to do that. And I said that that's why I have no objection to those kind of jokes in bad times, because so you're you're saying that like when the the first shuttle exploded and stuff like. Uh, what does NASA and a walrus have in common? They're both looking for a tight seal. Okay. Yeah, okay. Good but, 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 I didn't think it was funny either. Soon. But it, no, soon, but, Alan. You, you know, Alex, <laughs> I remember over a little over four years ago telling uh, before he went off uh, social media, communicating with Rick Overton. It's like sharpen up your knife, pal. You're going to have a lot of material. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. And uh, what did he go off of social media? Uh, yeah, Facebook. He he just he just got sick of just you know defending, and I don't blame him. Oh, I find that anytime I would make a comment or even a joke on my Facebook page, I would get tons of people complaining about it, mm -hmm. and, then, and then they would start fights with each other, or I would say something. And somebody else would reply to it, and somebody else would reply to it. And by the time you got down to the 50th person, it was a completely different discussion. <laughs> you know. And let me ask you, everyone here, you've all we've all visited the Capitol, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. no, well, no, I've never been to the Capitol. Oh, no, I've never, I've never been to the Capitol. I was to the Rayburn office building. Ooh. I, I Ooh, testified to the Rayburn like, office outside. building. Wow. You know, and that, that, that to me is like a real, like, you could tell it's just important. You know, I, I don't like to use, oh, it's a sacred. It really has that feeling of, oh, shit, I'm here. You know, you're in the, in the rotunda there. It's like, it's really amazing. Well, you've and, been there, right, Josh? Yeah. Yeah. I've just been outside and I felt that. Yeah, me too. In Hollister? I think it's meant to have. Uh, I, feel, I, think, I feel other I, things I, here. I think it's meant to have that effect on you. I think that's one of the reasons it was built, is to say this is what who we are, you know, and this is where we do it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's why we were we were even overly upset at it being attacked, is because it is such a hallowed institution. And I don't believe in that kind of thing about it being hallowed or any kind of religious attribution put to it or anything like that. But it was just something that to us represented maybe, maybe a little place of safety, where things could be contemplated and the and the wheels of government turn, and we yeah, we put it on the money, <laughs> you know. I Personally, mean, my whole my whole time in that area, which was very very short, yeah, in the whole Washington D.C. area was was short and sweet. But <clears throat> the whole time I was there, I was just in awe. Yeah. It just had a different feeling when you were there, walking yeah. by the Treasury yeah. Building, going to the wall, going to you know the the monuments. Uh, it was just, it was an it was really, it's a moving place. Yeah, uh, knowing what happened there. Uh, uh, yes, John. What goes on there. John, yeah, yeah. When I was there, I I was staying in this hotel 
in Georgetown, you know, mm -hmm. which is outside so further, you know, it's a, it's, it's a fancy part mm -hmm. of town. There's a college there and there's a, a tavern there, a famous tavern. And I had never been in the place. I had never heard of the place before, but we went in there and we're sitting down in this booth and over to the rest of us, to the left of us, there's this plaque right by where we were sitting and said, this is where JFK uh, proposed to uh, Jackie Kennedy. Wow. Yeah. I was like, whoa, fuck. You know, there's just so much history wherever you go. Well, when it's I, so old, you know. When I was testifying before a committee, as negative as the circumstances were, uh, I, I felt a certain majesty in doing it. That at least for the first, you know, all your life you keep, you can write a letter to Washington, you get back mm -hmm. a form letter or whatever. But very seldom do you have a row of congressmen up on a dais looking at you while you're making your case. And I was really awed by that. And that was at a time where I was just like poo pooing everything. But ma'am, when that happened, I just. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about, Josh? What, what that kind of feeling you could get in that in that situation? Yeah, I mean, we visited multiple times. We go to D.C. Uh, fairly regularly. Um, there's a particular hotel that we stay at, um, <clears throat> out just outside the city, but right on the metro line. I know. How Is to that the one with so. the uh, with the six on it? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Uh, no, but I mean, we know how to use the, we always just stay right outside so we can park. And then we just use the Metro and go all around the city. I've been many times, uh, we have a Metro pass in DC as a matter of fact. So, yeah. uh, you know, so, I mean, I go as much as I can. And it's one of the places I think that you can go multiple times or as many times as you want it really doesn't get old and we visit different things each time and uh yeah you, you i mean i think it's the most beautiful city in america um that's just my preference and uh it's really great at night i don't know if anyone's ever been at night when the Capitol's lit mm -hmm. up the white house is lit up the washington monument is lit up you know they like the inside of the lincoln memorial um i've been to the lincoln memorial at night you know uh late at night and it's it's great. I mean, yeah. but yeah. that's what made yeah. what happened so so terrible. Maybe yeah. when this is all over, I'm going to go down to Washington and just do that. I've never been to the Capitol. I've never really been to the uh, the reflecting. You never played pool. tourist? No, never. I've gone down there uh, on one occasion to speak in front of a committee, and another time I went down there uh, was to uh, riot. <laughs> to, dem well, to demonstrate against the war in Vietnam. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, the, the tours that you take in the Capitol are nice. Uh, the way they do it now, obviously not right now with everything, but when it's, you know, back to normal, it's very nice. Uh, they give you these little headsets you can wear so that the person that's giving your tour can just speak in a regular tone. And not have to be, to you know, yelling in a crowd and all that. And, you know, it's, it's very informative, yeah. very nice. Well, Marjorie, they charge for that? Marjorie, it free? Uh, Marjorie free? My, my wife, um, used to work uh, for, the, for the government. She worked for some, uh, some uh, department down there. Uh, mm -hmm. And I can't remember which one. I'll have to ask her so I can tell her. But she yeah, lived I mean, down there for quite a while, so she's seen all of that up close, you know. Yeah, I mean, we... Uh, I mean, if anyone goes, I, I think the tours that you can take at night really are some of the best. I mean, last time we went, you know, we took one and, uh, um, you know, we took the metro into Union what, Penn Station there or whatever that's uh, still there. And that's where they're going to start it at. Um, you know, and you walk out the door on the outside and it looks directly at the Capitol, which is fairly close. So, you know, it's pretty pretty big and you just have this incredibly clear view of the Capitol dome all lit up and uh you know it's it's great and uh they take you across the river that night to the uh iwo jima memorial the marine corps memorial um i wonder you know, it, i wonder with up with all that great. went on on the sixth how close you're going to be able to get to the Capitol now well, I whether, mean, whether whether they're going to keep that open for people to go walk. I mean, they, they will. It, I mean, that'll go away and they'll take the barricades and all that down. I mean, there was always an extra element of security that was there. But, uh, 
I mean, the visitor center will open back up again. I mean, it was too big and too expensive not to. Um, and it's very well done. And, you know, it was nice because even if you're not taking a tour, you know, you could walk to the Capitol and you could walk right up to the to the steps or to the edge of the building. I mean, you can't go up or anything like that, you know, and there are some officers down there, but you can walk around and, and touch the, touch the marble and take pictures. And you know what I've, you know what I've been told that if you can ever get in there, you will gasp at, and that is the oval office that many times presidents have used the oval office to convince (laughs) people of something because they walk into that room and they just go, oh, "It's the Oval Office." And uh, I've always wanted—I've always wanted to see the Oval Office. That's always been my my big desire. Yeah. The only time I was there, we were at the Lincoln Memorial, mm-hmm. and a friend of mine says, "Wow, I didn't know he was that big," you know. And and I said, <laughs> "And he's not even standing up." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, you know, it's, uh, it's um, huge. I wonder. I wonder. In my lifetime, which is, you know, who knows how long that is? It could be the next ten years, or it could be next week. Hopefully, uh, Hopefully. let's say it's the next ten years. If we're going to sure. get back to any normalcy before I go, you know, you get to feel the same so. way, right, Mark? You're older. I, I think we will. It's just a ma- honestly, and I. I don't want to sound that cynical, but. Uh, the minute that the vaccines are fully available, in other words, you can go to your doctor's office. Now that can be summertime or next summer. Mm-hmm. It's going to go away. People are going to forget about it totally yeah. until the next disaster happens. And that's the way people are, unfortunately. Well, who knows what disease is next? That's the problem. But I think the next time we're going to be a little more prepared for it. I think the next time we see the first sign of it, we're going to do something about it. You know, we hope so. Depends and, on if there's a Republican and the president. Yeah, That's well, for but sure. isn't it interesting? I was mentioning this to Marjorie tonight. Isn't it interesting that the country that has handled this the best and has had the least problem is the place where it came from? China is not inundated with COVID. You know, so th- we should take a a page out of whatever they did. When they saw it happen, they just locked everything down in Wuhan. Mm-hmm. Well, they were shoving people in trucks, too, and taking them away. Yeah, But yeah. Ch- China also uses face res- recognition on their public streets, and yep. yeah. they do lockdown. They do lockdowns. I mean, they, they, have no liberties. they do stuff that people here say, oh, they're infringing on my rights and all that yep. stuff. So. But well, also, in this case, you know, and the other there. thing that they said is that now that we're back into WHO, that that's a big portion of it. You know, mm-hmm. if we don't help the other countries get rid of it, it's just going to continue and continue. Mm-hmm. We need to help the other countries get rid of it as well mm-hmm. without hoarding all the, the, the doses. We've taken up, us and some of the other, you know, first-rate countries have taken up all the orders for all the, the doses. And if we don't mm-hmm. let the other countries have some, they've got to they've knock it out too. Otherwise, it's going to continue to mutate and it's going to continue to spread well, back. Well, remember that we, we actually... If we were out of the WHO, we're just yeah. taking over. But you got to remember, they aren't giving this stuff away for free. you got to no, buy it. We're yeah. talking about $37 billion worth of shit. Yeah. And so a little country, a small country, might not be able to afford it. You right. Know? And if they don't, can't afford it, it's not like uh, AstraZeneca or somebody like that's going to go. Oh, here, have some on us. No, but if we if we've overbought, we can give them some. Yeah, I agree, and other Kevin. countries can do the same. Mm-hmm. Now, what is this Defense Production Act? What will that do for all of this? Anybody know? It's oh. just going to give the people. It's going to give uh, everybody more. It's going to give more raw materials to to manufacturers to give yeah. them. You know, give them the stuff to make stuff. Mm-hmm. Whereas remember they, were, they were trying to back. press um, Alex, if you remember months ago, they were trying to press Trump on to do that, to invoke those powers to get exactly. rescuers made. Mm-hmm. And he just sat on his thumbs like always. Oh, there's nothing going on. It's there like, were some factories that were ready to gear up yeah. and had, had lines. There was one mask factory that had three lines ready to go, but they couldn't mm-hmm. start up because they didn't have the raw materials and he wouldn't invoke the production act. And they were ready to go. They just needed the materials. 
and there was a lot of other factories that could have rekeyed their their production lines to do that shit. Yeah. But he wanted Ford, and he wanted all these other big companies under mm. his belt that to do that stuff, and he he was controlling who was doing that, and that was part of the problem that he wanted certain companies to do it so he could, you know, use them later on is yeah. what it seemed like. Yeah. And but there was did, other companies that were saying, hey, we're ready, we're ready. You know, we got three lines that are dead right now. We can employ a bunch of people, yeah. start up these lines, get us some yep. materials. And he'd, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. <clears throat> and he finally did, and he take, he tried to take credit for everything. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. And there's still more that could have done it. He wanted it to be called the Trump vaccine. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Instead, I think we should call it the Trump virus. Yeah. I agree. You know. Yeah. I mean, what makes me just so mad is how many people died in this country. Uh, 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 Charlie, you're our keep, you're keeper of the stats. How many yeah. dead as of today, tonight? 413,818 people. Say that again. 413,818 what? Americans have died. Wasn't it just 400,000 a few days ago? Yeah, three days in a row, we've been over 4,000 dead. Oh That's 12,000 right there. My God. My God. Yeah, half a million by the end of the next you know, month. And none of this yeah. had to happen. No. None of this had to happen. All, uh, you know, and, and why Trump didn't say to himself, like, you know, usually a president goes, oh, a war? We got a war's happening? Great. Because if I do what I'm supposed to do, I'll get reelected. Right? Well, this was a war. He yeah. should have known that if he had just handled this properly, he'd be a, he would have, he would have gotten my vote if he had handled it handled it properly, you know. Well, that's, that's what uh, Joe Biden's starting to treat it like. Yeah, exactly. Oh no, but he's already he's already the worst president of all time, according to Fox. Whatever, <laughs> you know. I mean, he, look, he's trying. Whether he's going to be successful at it, I I can only hope. You know? It's going to be a real hard job to unfix all Trump's fuck-ups. Well, you know, I kept saying, who the fuck wants this job? Who wants to be handed this mess? Right? Okay. He's got well, it sounds to me like he's putting the right people in the right places. So but hopefully I mean, he's going to... He, I, I he, think, you know, that's that's one thing that Trump didn't do is he didn't put the right people in. He put his buddies in oh. certain places that didn't know Jack their ass from the hole in the ground. Yeah. And yeah. this guy seems like, you know, Joe seems to be putting people that are at least halfway smart and at least have been doing something before. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, at least he's putting the right people in the right place. Yeah, well, he yeah. hit the ground yeah. running. Yeah. I mean, from right after the uh, election... He was I mean, I'm back not hearing at, a lot of complaints from anybody. He was back at the Oval Office yep. signing things. And by the way, he doesn't do something Trump did. He signs them and then he moves yes. it over. He doesn't hold yeah. it up and show you his signature. <laughs> yeah. 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 Do like one a day. Trump was doing like one a day or one a week also. Milk it all out. It looks like he was a kid going... Look, teacher, I finished my exam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he doesn't use a big Sharpie marker either. No. He, he, in fact, he was having to look where to sign a couple of those things. And he reads it before he, he signs it. He read the it. fucking thing. He yeah. reads it. Yeah. He read them all. He'll get them pictures. You know, he could suddenly say, well, what is this in here about everybody gets a free Slurpee? What, what, what is that? <laughs> you know. Um, maybe, it, maybe he'll get a news crew in prison. And when he draws his signature on the prison wall, they can take a picture of that. They can take a picture of it, yeah. Well, I don't know. I, Quite frankly, I'm just if they would just keep his picture off the television set now, you know, every time I see it, I go, oh, no, I'm, I'm remembering You're watching the wrong guy. station, Alex. I, I've been yeah. watching the news, and I haven't seen much of him at all. And that's I yeah. well, CNN, MSNBC, but... I'm telling you, every time they mention his name, they put his picture up. Oh. Yeah, I'll tell you, I've well, seen a lot of them. I it's watched pretty nice. the news a lot less than I did a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, uh, me too. I have no reason to watch it. It's like, yeah. I need a break from Marjorie it. still got it on all the time, so that's how come I see it. But I'll tell you something, and I noticed, and I've mentioned this before, and I, I if you go back and watch it, it's true. Every time he got on an airplane or the helicopter, as he was going up the stairs... 
he would tap the handle about yeah. three times. That's obsessive compulsive behavior. Yep. Because I have that. I do, certain thing, I do a certain thing before a plane takes off. I tap my, my uh, knee 10 times. Right? He, he was signaling Q. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. Oh, but, maybe. but this was compu compulsive, obsessive compulsive behavior. I mean, the man was not well. Okay. I've seen, I've seen Bernie Sanders a lot lately. Oh, listen. Yeah. I got to oh, say, say something about that. <laughs> yeah. I'll go to you, Alan. Will you lay off Bernie Sanders with his <laughs> mittens and his scarf and his hat? Okay. Will you just bobblehead too? Will you just stop it? He's an old man like I am, and that's the way you dress when you're out in a cold day. Oh, yes. That's not going to stop everybody. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> you, you know, you if if you you should see Jeff when it's cold. Okay, right, Jeff. Yeah. Right, you got the mitten. Should have had the, a hat on. He I lost mean, all, his all they're doing is making fun of him because he's an old fart. Yes, <laughs> Alan. Right here. I, I think. I think. He's ready to there go. You, there you go, Jeff. I, I, ready I think. Roll. I think if you continue to have this four nights a week, there ought to be two nights a week that Trump's name is not mentioned. Well, hopefully, it won't have to be mentioned soon. It won't have to be mentioned. Um, I think there should be two nights a week. We don't talk about COVID. It's almost as bad yeah. as Trump. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we will get over, I think, all of this. And uh, we like when I do that 4 o'clock show in the afternoon on Monday, some days we never even get around to talking about any politics at all. It's just mm -hmm. nice, simple chat Lucky between people. You know? Lucky you. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. So, I mean, it can be done, you know. We should just have, like, Soros-free nights. I think <laughs> Jeff knows what I'm saying. And obviously, Charlie theme did nights. too. Huh? Let's talk about your favorite burger place. Oh, no, something. no. I hate theme nights. Oh, that's the no. worst thing. Theme oh, night. that's the worst thing. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I used to, years ago, when I first started doing talk shows, I would go, and here's uh, here's uh, um, here's our topic of the day. Okay. And then people would call in and answer a question quickly. And I'd stop that really fast. That is just the okay. worst kind Forget of radio it. you can do. Scratch it off the wall. Here's our topic for tonight. Yes, uh, yes. Are you are you going to upload any of those the radio shows you said you've been listening to lately? I can't find them on my computer. It only comes up on my. Uh, I'm going to have to figure out how to find them. If I mm. find them, I will. I'll put them up on the weekends or something. You know. That'd be awesome. Yeah, because I mean, I, I was listening to one the other day, and I went, "Gee, I was I was that good? I can't <laughs> believe that." Uh, you know, um, I'm gonna keep bugging you. Hmm? I'm gonna what, keep bugging you about those. Yeah, keep bugging me about it, and I'll tell <laughs> you to go fuck yourself. So yeah. <laughs> anyway, there's the theme song, boy. Oh. This, this went by nicely tonight. God, not a problem at all. Uh, and uh, I'm I'm inoculated, and Alan's inoculated, and soon uh, the, you, you're getting yours, right, Jeff? When? Um, on February third. February third, and uh, Charlie's it's getting tomorrow. his tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah. And uh, when are you supposed to get yours, uh, Kevin? You know? No, they haven't called me. They haven't so. called you yet. How about you, Josh? You have you are you put in for him yet? No. How about you, uh, Mark? <laughs> yeah. Okay, he's in Florida. That laugh is a Florida laugh. Anyway. They're all the old people. <laughs> that's it for tonight. That's it for the week. Hey, everybody, thank you so mm -hmm. much to Jeff and to Alan and to Brian and to Charlie and to Josh and to Kevin and to Trucker Steve and to John Larkin and, of course, uh, Mark. Call more often. You know, this, the coast is clear. It's really nice. It's a nice bunch of people. Anyway, give yourself a big uh, round of a wave, good big wave goodbye, and I'll give a, I, I'll wave goodbye as well. Okay, uh, there we go. There, there they. Oh, that, wait a minute. That's the uh, Zoom panel. Okay, there we go. All right, I pushed the wrong button. Anyway, thanks to all of them, and thanks to you for joining us tonight. Uh, Jack Bishop is next with The Intersection. You call him on Skype, okay, uh, at uh, GabNet Live is the uh, address to call on Skype. 
We'll be back again on uh, Monday at 4 o'clock in the afternoon with our pop-up show. And then right back here at 10.30 in the evening uh, on Tuesday night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, okay, be safe out there and wear a mask. Night, everybody. Have a nice weekend.